Hello and welcome to Within the Frame. I'm Handan in Seoul. Deep fake sex crimes have engulfed South Korea, prompting authorities to intensify their crackdown efforts. The police say some 120 cases of deep fake pornography have been reported in the last week of August alone, and alarmingly, six out of seven suspects were teenagers. The police has also launched a probe into encrypted messaging app Telegram on charges of abetting the distribution of deepfake pornography. Why has South Korea become the hotspot for deepfake sex crimes and why are so many minors involved? What measures can be taken to strengthen punishments for these illegal activities? In today's episode, we explore sprawling deepfakes in South Korea from both legal and criminological perspectives. For that, we're joined by lawyer Kim Ji-soo in the studio. Thank you so much for coming in today. You're welcome. We also have K. Jaishankar, founder, principal director, and professor of criminology and justice sciences at the International Institute of Justice and Police Sciences. He's also the founding father of the International Journal of Cyber Criminology. Welcome to the program. Well, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. All right, Chisu, could you start us off by providing us an overview of the current situation and the severity of deep fake sex crimes here in Korea? So the issue of deep fake sex crime in South Korea has reached a number of concern recently. The recent data indicated that the number of victims has now surpassed 2,000, which is an alarming 11-fold increase over the past six years. And the severity of these crime is um, particularly unnerving related to the technology involved. It. Um, unlike traditional forms of image manipulations and videos, um, the recent deep fake tools are becoming increasingly easy to use and it requires only little technical expertise to forge some kind of deepfake images. So this accessibility allows virtually anyone with a computer to just create a highly realistic and damaging content with just of a click. And the consequences of this accessibility are very much profound since the deepfake content can be produced and disseminated with just of a click. So this viral nature of digital content not only amplifies the potential harm for the victims, but also it makes it really hard for police to control or to remove any kind of contents that are released online. So this creates a scenario where the threat is not only persistent, but also pervasive. So it seems that the government's intensified crackdown on this matter has been a necessary response to this growing menace. You know, we'll talk more about why South Korea became so vulnerable to digital sex crimes, but it seems perhaps because Korea is one of the world's most wired nations, right? That's right. Uh, reports are trickling in that many Korean women are now hurrying to take down their photos on various social media platforms. And as you pointed out, it all happened so quickly, right? right. The number of cases exploded by tenfold, more than tenfold right. in the past five to six years. So so uh, really, this is a very, very serious, concerning situation. Now, Professor Jai Shankar, you are highly recognized for your pioneering work in the field of cyber criminology. Now, as a longtime expert in cyber criminology and justice sciences, how do you assess the severity and dangers of deep fake crimes? See, this is a very new form of crime which is unprecedented in nature because people never thought such a crime would even emerge. For the past 20 to 25 years, there's a very significant growth of uh, social media. And the people have moved from the real space to the uh, online space and they have started doing a lot of activities including trading, including connecting for personal and uh, professional purposes. But also significantly people have moved their criminalized intentions to online too. In this way, you will find that individuals who have repressed criminal behavior in the physical space have moved to online space to show their repressed criminal behavior. And that is what a crux of uh, my theory called space transition theory. And it also creates a disinhibition uh, effect where people will not associate themselves with the activity they are associated online. So they may go and commit certain activity, but they will not connect with that activity on their own. 
and deep fakes are something that which has emerged in a very systematic way that the rise of artificial intelligence is seen in the past five years in a very big way and the growth is very great in the past two years by chat gpt and others we are finding that um, artificial intelligence is a very wonderful tool but it also is a tool uh, like a double-edged sword that it's highly misused and deep fake is a ugly offshoot of artificial intelligence and it is becoming very very difficult for the states to control this a double-edged sword indeed uh, it's certainly a rapidly evolving threat with significant social psychological and legal implications now Chisu, the wall street journal citing a global security firm has reported that more than half of uh, individuals featured in deep fake pornography are south korean celebrities it's quite shocking isn't it is yes. is korea now the most vulnerable country to deep fake sex crimes. Well, there hasn't been an official governmental collated number regarding whether the Koreans are due uh, mostly shown on the pornography worldwide. However, it seems plausible to suggest that South Korea is vulnerable for such crimes because the legal system currently in Korea is imposing very light punishment towards such sex crimes. And um, those lenient legal framework is um, uh, really light um, compared to Western countries. And even when relevant laws do are in practice, it's, uh, the enforcement itself remains challenging because um, platforms like Meta and Telegrams, which are um, conduits for such kind of um, sex, sexual um, postings, are based in different countries. So it makes it really difficult for Asian governments, including South Korea, to enforce its law to the companies abroad. So Korean authorities are indeed struggling to compel these companies to cooperate and to enforce their legal orders. And this gap in our legal structure would create a kind of a safe haven for culprits to resulting ongoing and disproportionate targeting of South Korean influencers and celebrities, making them frequent victims of these malicious acts. And we'll talk more about legal punishments in our next question. But before that, Professor Jai Shankar, what's even more shocking is that minors are more likely to fall victim to deep fake crimes. It was found that six out of 10 victims of deep fake pornography investigated by police over the past three years were minors. Now, in some cases, students uh, circulated fake AI nude images of their friends or teachers. Now, what psychological factors drive such crimes and what can we learn from these incidents? See, there are two types of people now. One are digital natives and one are <laughs> digital immigrants. Those who are born with the internet and those who are uh, not born with the internet like us. So now there is a very big conflict between these two people where the digital natives are in conflict with the digital uh, immigrants because the digital natives are very powerful, they are very knowledgeable, they are very skillful in using internet and also the new technology such as artificial intelligence. And you'll find the value system of the previous generation and the current generation is highly contradictory because the previous generation continues in the Eastern nations such as India or China or Korea or Japan more patriarchal. But now the modern day generation is breaking the patriarchy, but at the same time, they do not understand the limitations in which they are operating on freedom of speech. So where the freedom of speech starts and where the freedom of speech ends, and also concerns for privacy, the young uh, people, especially the uh, teenagers, they are not aware compared to the previous generation. So that is where you are finding that more uh, delinquent children or more children in conflict with law is happening in these cases. And it's becoming difficult because the law is very concerned with uh, juveniles who are committing crime and uh, they may get a lesser punishment. But at the same time, there is a very big role on the uh, schools and the parents to instill values on these cases of uh, children who are involving in these kind of activities. And uh, there should be some kind of a moral and physical regulation. Both should be happening within the family system and also the school system 
to prohibit and prevent such kind of activity, which is going to emerge as a big menace in the future, because these are the children who are the future of South Korea, and they may uh, become more vulnerable and they become more uh, criminalized in nature, which would be very difficult for a, a nation that is very, very much growing in a big way. Chisu, the government is pushing to toughen legal punishments. First off, what are the current legal provisions related to digital sex crimes here in Korea, and how do you expect them to be further strengthened? So the only provision currently in South Korea that punishes defake sexual exploitation is Article 14 on the Sexual Violence Crimes Punishment Special Act. And this article stipulates that anyone who produces or distributes such kind of nudity false videos can be punished by imprisonment for up to five years or up to fine to 50 million won. However, the problem here is that the present legal actions against defake contents are subject to proving a certain intention to distribute such kind of materials. So in a sense that it limits the scope of prosecution, leaving out culprits who merely possessed it, the material itself. However, the strengthened proposals aim to criminalize even such kind of mere possessions. So this towards um, this is a significant step towards deterring and um, creation and circulation of such kind of contents. So by targeting these possessions, the law sends a very strong message to punish those not only who um, consumes and storage of non-consensual defeat contents are unacceptable and would be punished it harshly. So you can get in a lot of trouble just for possessing those uh, defake nude images. Yes. Many female activists here in Korea have staged protests uh, criticizing the soft right. punishments on sex crimes. In fact, over the past three years, uh, the number of offenders caught distributing materials of child sexual exploitation as well as other illegal sexual recordings in cyberspace reached over 7,500, but only around 5% of those offenders were arrested. That's so right. Certainly there needs to be a further boosting, further stre strengthening of those legal punishments. Exactly. Uh, Professor Jai Shankar, South Korean police have launched an investigation into encrypted messaging app Telegram on charges of abetting the distribution of deep fake pornography, as I mentioned at the top. How do you anticipate things to play out? See, two things are happening now. Uh, one thing, uh, if Telegram is willing to offer a support to the police, and that is a very great thing because more policing can happen uh, inside. Uh, that means the telegram inside itself where the servers are located in various parts of the world and also in their headquarters in Dubai. And uh, that will be very, much helpful uh, to the police because police access in encrypted division is not that easy compared to the one which is unencrypted. And in fact, in many of the places, we have found that uh, the president of Seoul, uh, the president of uh, North, uh, South Korea, has also mentioned cases where uh, there will be a severe action taken by the police where they may go into encrypted spaces. But again, it would be very, very difficult in uh, the online spaces to move into encrypted spaces. But now that uh, the uh, Telegram uh, owners are, are opening the doors for the South Korean uh, police, uh, they can uh, involve in a better activity. And I find that more uh, deletion of the such kind of uh, defake images is possible, one thing. And also, further uh, inclusion of such fake images are also uh, can be found out by the police and they can be deleted uh, at uh, a kind of ace. And again, when there is a very significant monitoring of uh, police uh, within the telegram or any other app uh, of, of such a nature, uh, naturally there will be a fear com uh, composition among the minds of the young people or the others. And naturally the kind of a culture of such uh, posting of artificial intelligence-based uh, fake images may reduce significantly. From your perspective, what strategy does Korea need to win this fight against sprawling deepfake sex crimes, and what measures should be implemented for the protection and support of victims? See, again, uh, the South Korea's uh, political structure, South Korea's social structure, these are uh, coming in a very different way, like uh, moving uh, towards a kind of a capitalistic uh, society typical to US. Uh, there is always a conflict between the deep uh, uh, interested culture, which is more 
uh, family oriented which is more deeper in nature compared to the value system which is more western in nature so that is why there is a big conflict now the government's role should not only be in the legal spaces because legal comes only uh, for kind of a protection or prevention or then after month what happens after the crime so we have to hit the hit the roots of the crime which is happening more in the school so now the awareness program should be done more in the schools and uh, uh, experts should be brought out and they should teach the children that what is the right way of accessing internet and what are their limitations because children are not aware where they have to stop where they have to start because that is a big problem uh, you can find that the uh, internet is uh, is a kind of a uh, ocean where uh, a kind of a sea of information is available which are good and which are uh, bad in fact uh, pornography material is available just like that in a whims and fancy in a click we can get uh, pornographic material and that goes to the hands of the children that becomes more dangerous because they become more addicted that is why they wanted to see their own nearby people like their classmates or the teachers in that similar situation so the access to pornography should be regulated by the government and also child sexual abuse materials should be strictly prohibited and also they should collaborate with other internet giants such as google uh, facebook x and others and also the american government and try to control certain things because you see uh, even though we call internet as a global space it's more an american space i say because most of the activities most of the servers and most of the laws governing internet are american and that is where we have a big conflict uh, when it comes to what is meant by freedom of speech uh, of uh, nations in the east like india or S south korea compared to the american because the first amendment of the u.s constitution guarantees freedom of speech which is not that guaranteed in uh, eastern spaces where it, we have limited freedom so there is a big conflict and that's why international cooperation is very must uh, in terms of both the private and the public pro mm -hmm. people so international cooperation is essential in completely stamping out uh, digital uh, sex crimes. And I think you also highlighted a very important point that not only boosting legal punishments, but strong education about this issue in schools is just as important. Now, Chisu, the fact that both perpetrators and victims are predominantly teenagers brought renewed scrutiny of juvenile delinquency, which of course uh, allows teenage offenders to evade punishment. What are your thoughts on this? Well, the involvement of teenagers as both victims and the perpetrators is indeed a very complex challenge because um, under current South Korea's um, juvenile delinquency system, minors who are under 14 often evade significant legal consequences due to their age limit, which um, individuals either under 14 are not subjected to any criminal penalties or punishments for such kind of acts. And the main um, issue is balance justice for victims and rehabilitation of young offenders and the Korean legal system has historically been very soft towards juveniles presenting that there is kind of a strong belief that they can be rehabilitated and while I also agree that it is important to consider the rehabilitation process for juveniles however given the distress of this matter I think um, it is now for the law should be updated and to reflect the changing nature of crime and we need to um, consider the severity and long lasting impacts on victims on itself. Now broadening the scope a bit, Professor Jai Shankar, how do you analyze the evolution of crime in modern society in light of vast technological advancements and what measures are being implemented at both government and international levels to address these changes? See, traditionally, we had only conventional crimes, that is crimes against persons, crimes against property, and crimes against uh, governments. But now we have an offshoot of uh, the internet called cyber crimes, which is very different. So there's a parallel form of uh, criminal activities are happening. So apart from the regular crimes, now digital crimes are the 
cyber crimes and also some crimes are overlapping so you see that uh, certain crimes have moved from the physical to the cyberspace like uh, you you say uh, robbery it has moved to uh, online spaces or if you say stalking it has moved to online spaces as cyber stalking pornography has moved to online so most of the activities which were done in the physical spaces are now moving to online spaces creating new forms of uh, crime but these are overlapping crimes which are physical in nature but now uh, altogether to uh, new forms of crime. This is not uh, uh, there for before some 20 years, for example, like deep fake technology based crimes or crimes which are exclusive cyber in nature. So it can be committed only by uh, cyber uh, space, but not by physical space. Uh, so uh, you can see even the movement of uh, hate crimes from the physical space to the online space. And also social media based crimes are uh, emerging in a big nature. And then a lot of stakeholders available in these forms compared to the physical crimes. In physical crimes, the more the stakeholders are the public and the government and the society. But whereas in the online space uh, cyber crimes, you'll find that stakeholders are many, including the private parties such as the internet giants like Google, Facebook, and other social media companies. Uh, they play a very, very big role. And apart from the governments, the international governments play a very big role. So that's why there is a very big divide. As uh, you see, the uh, more participants are happening and more speed of internet is happening in spaces like like Singapore or South Korea, uh, but the, at the same time, the usages are also lot in the Korean space, and people are now, now creating reels, and more actors and actresses are coming. In fact, there's a big impact of Korean dramas in India. Uh, many people are uh, very much uh, happy to adopt that culture. So that way you will find that uh, uh, there are good things happening, but at the same time, such uh, bad uh, activities are happening in cyberspace and uh, stakeholders have become multifaceted. So it is time that government should not rely on one stakeholder. The government of uh, South Korea should expand its uh, collaborative ventures with various uh, uh, parties, not only with one or two parties, and incorporating more private companies uh, to support them will be very highly helpful. And our final uh, discussion point today, Chisu, the government plans to come up with a comprehensive and pan-government countermeasures uh, by next month. What sort of measures should be prioritized to win this battle uh, against crimes involving deep fakes? Well, first, the government has taken a strong action and suggested three initiatives to solve this problem. And the first one is strengthening legal measures. Second one is supporting for victims. And lastly, technological countermeasures. However, as a law practitioner, the, the top priority would be definitely to strengthen the legal framework itself. Since strengthening the legal framework doesn't mean that just about making new laws, but it's about ensuring that our laws are practically enforced, comprehensive, and adaptable to this rapidly evolving technology um, landscape and as seen in countries in like United States and France where strict laws and heavy penalties uh, for digital sex crime have been more effectively enforced it is time for to Korea to adopt more aggressive regulations frameworks and work closely with international partners to catch up these um, world trends so it's about uh, time for South Korea to make uh, upgrades, to make adjustments, to make changes, especially regarding crimes in cyberspace. Thank you so much, Chisu, for your presence with us today. Okay. We appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Professor Jai Shankar, for your in depth analysis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. And that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you for watching and be sure to tune in same time tomorrow to join our conversation. Goodbye for now.